May the business meeting of the World Science Fiction Society at the 81st Worldcon will be in order. I am Kevin Stanley. I am the deputy presiding officer. I will preside in such cases as when uh, the presiding officer is unable to preside for various reasons. Hello, everyone. My name is Xiang Xiaoliao. I'm the timekeeper of this business meeting. I'm Donald Eastlake. I'm the presiding officer. I'm Anne Marie Rudolph. I'm the secretary. 大家好，我是黄义阳，是这一次事务会议的中方秘书。谢谢。呃，我们台下有姚雪本本次会议的现场监督. We have, uh, we also have Yao Xue, uh, the floor manager of this business, uh, business meeting, please. So you should note that this meeting is being recorded. The video camera over here. So you should assume that uh, you know, your image and voice might appear if you speak in the recording, and this is going to get uploaded to the World Contents channel on YouTube. Um, hopefully people have noted their presence at the meeting on the attendance lists. There are also uh, business meeting attendee ribbons available over there. You can attach them to the bottom of your badge. Uh, you should silence any noise-making devices and like cell phones. Uh, if you are called on to speak or you should come up to the microphone at the podium on the stage. If there's a problem with that, whatever we uh, are speaking up, we have some mobile microphones, I believe, that can be taken out into the audience. So as a reminder, when people are debating, they do not need to, uh, what they say might not be true, but uh, you, you must be polite. That you should be particularly careful about talking about anybody's motivation. You should address your comments to the specific motion, whether that motion is good or bad, and not, not address them to the characteristics of the speaker. Um, I have a slide here on how to appeal the decision of the chair, but I won't go into that unless that situation actually arises. So I just want to go through uh, the summary of the overall agenda for people. So this is the, the preliminary business meeting, and it mostly has to do with receiving committee reports and setting debate time limits for uh, constitutional amendments and other things that will come up at the later sessions. Uh, though new constitutional amendments can be uh, discussed and amended at this meeting. Then tomorrow will be the first main business meeting uh, where the, I got, uh, but the other thing that will happen today is nominations for the Mark Protection Committee, which is a committee that protects the service marks in the grand list, just like the name Hugo Award. Uh, then the actual election for that is tomorrow, and any business that we didn't finish that we're supposed to uh, be scheduled for today can get carried over. And uh, we will actually start in the, uh, mostly the debate and uh, decisions on the new constitutional amendments. Saturday, the meeting's primary topic is site selection. 
at the Saturday meeting, the winner for 2025 will be announced. And they will have an opportunity to make a presentation. People can ask questions. There will also be a chance for the Glasgow Worldcon next year to present. People can ask them questions. And uh, a five minutes each for uh, 2026. And if there's enough time, maybe even later bidders to speak. There'll probably be a break then, and then we'll have the results of the market protection committee uh, election and continue with our work on the motions for uh, constitutional amendments and so forth. If we uh, do not finish on Saturday, then there is a meeting scheduled on Sunday morning, and uh, we can continue then. There will probably be an actual meeting of the market protection committee on Sunday uh, it'll be in this room and uh, if we don't have any other business carry forward it will be at, at 10 a.m. at the beginning otherwise it will be 15 minutes after uh, the last session of the business meeting. So uh, the market session <coughs> the meeting is open uh, any business member can, can attend only the members of the market protection committee uh, can vote at that meeting. So in a little bit more detail on uh, the agenda for today, uh, as, they say, as I say, setting the agenda for the, the time limits, uh, you can make changes to the new constitutional amendments that come up uh, at this meeting if you have time, but not for ones that are up for ratification. To change the U.S. Constitution, something has to be passed one year and then ratified the following year. So we have two constitutional amendments that were passed last year that are up for ratification, and they cannot be changed at this preliminary business meeting. Uh, <coughs> we can consider changes to the standing rules for the business meeting, and we can consider resolutions today. As I said before, I have the uh, Mark Session Committee meeting nominations today. There are two motions that are theoretically could be used later, but they normally only occur at the preliminary business meeting. One is the motion to postpone indefinitely, which obviously kills the motion. Uh, it requires a two-thirds vote, and there is uh, two minutes of debate time allowed for those in favor of and against the uh, motion to postpone indefinitely for that item of business. And the other is to object to consideration. That can, objection to consideration can only be for new business, cannot be applied to a constitutional amendment after ratification. And that's not debatable. This makes the motion go away right away, and it takes a three quarters vote. So that concludes the introductory remarks. The next uh, item are the committee reports. And the first committee report is the Mark Protection Committee, of which Kevin Stanley is the chairman. Good morning. I am Kevin Stanley. I am the current chair of the World Science Fiction Society's Mark Protection Committee, which is established in the Worcester's Constitution. And our job is to maintain the trademarks, service marks, and other intellectual property of the World Science Fiction Society. Most importantly, the trademark for Worldcon and for the Hugo Award. We are also the board of directors of a corporation called Worldcon Intellectual Property, which is a California nonprofit corporation that was formed to have a legal entity as opposed to an unincorporated association holding title to the marks. The report of the NPC is attached to the agenda, and I will not go through it unless someone raises a question. But I will call attention to one important action taken fairly late in the year, uh, before as we were finalizing our report. Effective at the end of August of this year, the Mark Protection Committee 
formally transferred the title to the WISPAS service marks, like Hugo Award and WorldCon, to WorldCon Intellectual Property, or WIT, W-I-P. WIT already had the title to the registrations in the European Union and the United Kingdom. On the advice of our legal counsel, we transferred the title to WIP so that everywhere it is held by WIP. And this was something that our legal counsel said would be a good idea because otherwise we were going to confuse the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Uh, this has been done and recorded and we are actually starting the process of doing some mark renewals that were up for renewal with the United States PTO. That is all of our report other than what is in writing. And I will yield for any questions, if there are any, but not hearing any, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is a motion, uh, in the constitutional amendment. I did not. <laughs> it's okay. You want to read it? Yeah. Okay. In the Mark Protection Committee report. Uh, and uh, this is in the appendix uh, to your uh, agenda, appendix A, where it has the Mark Protection Committee report. It concerns the use of uh, the WISPAS marks, and just meant to clarify uh, and set down existing practice. Uh, so I can read it, it's very sh short. Uh, the main part <coughs> of it, uh, it says selected convention committees are authorized to use the WISPAS mark <coughs> to the extent necessary and customary to run their conventions. And the Mark Protection Committee may provide more detailed guidance and uh, changes uh, World Con and Master to select a convention uh, in a couple places. So, uh, as a new constitutional amendment, this is something we will be mostly discussing and voting on later, uh, but we need to set the time limit. So I'd like to caution people that uh, the time limits may seem short that I've suggested, but uh, that time is really only the time for somebody actually speaking in debate time it takes them to get to the microphone or to get back to their seat or uh, consultations at the head table, anything like that, doesn't count. So this is not the total amount of time that might be taken up, which is almost always longer. Uh, anyway, as chair, I've suggested four minutes for this constitutional amendment of Mark's authorization. Is there any objection to that time limit? Seeing none, the time limit is set to four minutes, and we'll be considering that uh, later in this, uh, later days of this meeting. The next uh, item, which is part of the Mark Protection Committee report, is the nominations for the elected slots. There are three people elected uh, each year for a three-year term, and the three people whose terms are expiring this year are uh, Judy Bemis, Mike Wilmoth and Jeremy Dashoff. Uh, people who wish to uh, be on the ballot need to also submit a written consent uh, to be on the ballot. <coughs> and I have uh, their written consents from these three potential nominees. So the question is, are there any nominees for the Mark Protection Committee? I nominate the uh, retiring members to stand again. Yeah, the uh, three incumbents have been nominated. Are there any other nominees for election to the Mark Protection Committee? Seeing none, I'll declare nominations closed. And we will have those three people listed on the ballot. It is also possible to run as a write-in candidate, uh, in which case uh, people who want to vote for you will have to write your name in and won't be on the ballot and you still have to submit this written consent. Uh, but uh, you have to do that before the end of voting, which will be tomorrow. So 
So the next item of business is the report from the nitpicking and fly sticking committee. Uh, since I am chair of that committee, uh, I have to recuse myself from presiding and Kevin Stanley will preside. So I just, yeah, you're, Mr. Eastlake. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the mark, uh, so the nitpicking and fly specking committee uh, did some work this past year. We were, we had a motion referred to us by last year's business meeting. And the desire was that uh, committees, uh, the specific committee, we appoint uh, set committees to study some issue with the Hugo Awards or something like that. The desire was for such committees to be able to ask a question of the business meeting and get feedback without having to have a meeting voted on. So a specific motion, and this is on page three of your agenda, well, the English language agenda, uh, called Business Not for Final Passage, and then nitpicking and fly specking committee will review that and decided to generalize it. And uh, further down on page three of the English language agenda is item one, short title discussion items. So uh, this is a motion to change the standing rules, which was part of the report of the committee. And I'll go through the whole report before anything is done on these motions. The committee has also been studying uh, part of its job, the Constitution and standing rules, to see if any changes or improvements are needed. And uh, came up with two such proposals for this business meeting. <clears throat> These are on page four, no, item two, and uh, page four and five, items two and three. So item two is called business meeting contingencies, and it's to provide procedures for what to do in case a business meeting cannot be held because the roll con cannot be held, or even though know, the business meeting is held, there are not enough people to constitute a quorum, so the business meeting cannot uh, legally conduct its activities. <clears throat> and we have had problems recently with the uh, global pandemic, and uh, earlier in the history of the World Science Fiction Society, there were problems with world wars, which were prevented any conventions occurring and things like that. So uh, you can read the provisions here. Uh, as it basically provides that business can be deferred and the uh, market protection committee elections can be deferred and so on. And even if there is a world convention and a business meeting at it, that convention can decide to postpone a ratification if it chooses to do so. So that's the, the uh, business the contingencies motion. The second one, uh, which is actually item, the second constitutional amendment, which is I label as item three, up on page five, it's called consistent change. The short title is consistent change. And that this has a bunch of relatively small changes to make the constitution more consistent with the current model that people have business membership and then they have attending supplements separately. Uh, changes were made to put that into effect before, but there were other parts of the Constitution that were not consistently changed. So this would make those changes. And uh, there's some commentary in the agenda uh, describing the motivation for the changes. So there, um, uh, that, um, really that constitutes the report of the Nitpicking and Fly Statement Committee. Are there any questions on that report? Up again, sorry. Um, I, let me go through the time limit setting for this because they have yes. they've not actually been injured before the meeting yet. Right. On item uh, A21A, discussion items, and is now before us. The chair suggests six minutes of debate time. Is there any? Objection to six minutes. Hearing none, we will use that. Item 
A21B, business meeting contingencies. The chair suggests six minutes for this item. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, we will use that. Item A21C, consistent change. The chair suggests six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, six minutes is selected. Yes. It is. I thought it was a... Uh, Oh, you're right. <coughs> yes. I should read our own report, shouldn't I? So, get back to the right page. Because the consistent change proposal is a change to the standing rules, it can be considered immediately. No, no. Discussion, no, no. Discussion, discussion items. I'm in the wrong. Why did my page go? It's page three of the English agenda. Oh, I see. I apologize. I'm looking at the wrong page. All right. The item uh, at the bottom of page three of the English language agenda discussion items that uh, any committee report for the business meeting, including the business meeting, WSPUS, and WOCON committee reports may include a motion that a topic be discussed by the business meeting to provide feedback to the committee. Such discussion may include non-binding straw polls. If not specified in the motion, the default discussion time is six minutes, and the discussion item is scheduled as an item of new business. This has six minutes of debate time. Is there anyone who wishes to debate this motion at all? Is there any objection to adopting this motion as an amendment to the standing rules? Hearing none, this is adopted by unanimous consent. It uh, was not, I don't think it matters that much for this year, but this was not scheduled to take effect instantaneously, so it goes into effect at the end of this year's meeting and first effects next year's meeting. I don't know if it matters, though. We can we can deal with it if it comes up. Uh, Mr. Yallo? Uh, point of order, since it was adopted by unanimous consent, I think that counts as a word for two thirds necessary for the vote to go back. The member will please speak into the microphone for the record. Since it was adopted by unanimous consent, I believe that gives us more than the two thirds required for something to go into effect immediately. Well. That is true, uh, but it wasn't specified. Is there any objection to having the motion take effect immediately? Hearing none, the, rules, the, the, the motion takes effect immediately. The other two are constitutional amendments, so that's done. Is there any other business, any other questions to the uh, uh, nitpicking and fly specking committee? Mr. Yellow. I believe that amendments uh, to the constitutional amendments are in order at the preliminary. They are. You have a motion to amend? I have a motion to amend. Which one? Uh, amend the uh, member, the uh, postpone the business meeting contingencies motion. Okay. On page four of the English agenda. Right. And I move to add into the amendment on 6.6 .6 to say at which ratification is not postponed per 511 and 515. Did you say 511 and 515? 515. Thank you. The two sections that are being amended here. Is there a second to the member's motion? Second. Thank you. All right, it's been moved and uh, moved to amend by adding after the words at which ratification is not postponed, the words per 5, 
5.1.1 and 5.1.5. Do we have the motion correct, Mr. Heller? Yes. As the maker of the motion, you get the first chance to speak. There is six minutes of debate time total, and debate time used for amendments counts toward the total. So when Mr. Heller begins speaking, begin to count in favor of the amendment. Mr. Yow. I do not believe it is appropriate for a business meeting to postpone ratification for tactical reasons. I do believe that it is appropriate to postpone ratification because of lack of quorum. Therefore, I am limiting by this amendment the ability of the business meeting to postpone because somebody thinks it's a better way to pass a motion to kick it off to a later year, but still absolutely retaining the ability for the business meeting to deal with the problem of lack of quorum. Speech against? Mr. Eastlake. Yeah, I think that the example given is a good one where uh, there was a uh, Volcan, for example, in China, and there was an amendment that only affected domestic, or perhaps there was a Volcan in the United States, and if one has created an amendment that only affects the Asian science fiction convention that's been proposed, they might easily want to delay ratification to a Volcan being held in the geographic area that's primarily influenced. Also, if there's a majority of the business meeting willing to vote to postpone, that majority could just ratify it. So I don't quite see the point of the amendment. Is there a speech in favor of the amendment, the change to this proposal? Is there any further speech against amending the proposal? In that case, we will take a vote. All those in favor of the change to the proposal, which is just to add the words per 5.1.1 and 5.1.5 to the after the words at which ratification is not postponed. All those in favor of this change to the proposal, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, please raise your hands. Hands down. The affirmative has it. The proposal is changed and the words are added to the amendment. This does not adopt the constitutional amendment. That will be up for debate starting tomorrow. Is there any further issues or amendments to this item or any other item that of these two? Is there any other questions directed to the uh, nitpicking and fly specking committee? If not, I thank you, and I really uh, stand down from the chair and give it back to Mr. Eastley. Yeah. No pocket. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item of business is the Wilcon Runner's Guide Editorial Committee Report. That report is in the agenda, so you can read it. It's uh, about half a page of text. Uh, this is a committee that is working on a written document to help people run Wilcons. So there's no proposed there's no proposed action in this report. So unless somebody has a question, uh, I believe there's a meeting of representative of the committee here. But uh, unless there's some question, uh, we can just proceed. Um, the plan is to reappoint the existing committee, uh, including authorizing the chair of that committee to appoint new members. Next out of business is uh, the formalization of long list entries. There is a long list of world cons on the web that this committee maintains, all the notes for them and so forth. 
the URL. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, I forgot to ask. Can I forgotten? Can we do the reappointments of committees at this meeting? Uh, I believe so. In that case, I was supposed to, when I was presiding a few minutes ago, reappoint the NP, the nitpicking and fly specking committee as currently consisted. And I ask you, know, I have you. Is there any objection? Thank you. I apologize. So you can deal that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is uh, the formalization of the long list entries committee. Uh, there is a URL to the long list they can block. We also have a long list of uh, masters. So uh, people are welcome to look at that. And I will reappoint the committee uh, with the existing chair and member. Next is the financial reports. So the world funds, as long as they have the surplus money left over from their world fund era, occasionally they don't have it either. If they do, they're required to report annually uh, and uh, so show what they're doing with it. They are not required to have a representative here, or they're not, even if they do, they're not required to answer any questions. But uh, these reports with every, every world fund has it is required to has provided a report, and these are all available. They're in the agenda on the website. They're not necessarily in the uh, printed agenda, just because it's very voluminous, and a lot of pages. So I'll just go through and ask if there's any representatives present. The oldest World Con is 2013. It is still required to report. That's Lone Star Con 3. Is there a representative from Lone Star Con here? I do not see any. Next is the 2015 Worldcon SASCON. Spokane, Washington. Is there a representative from Spokane here? Next is 2016 Mid American 2. Kansas City. Is there a representative from Mid American present? I do not see any responses. Next is Worldcon 76. 2018. Uh, I guess we do have a representative. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Kevin Stanley was a co-chair. Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm Kevin Stanley. I'm a member of the board of directors of Worldcon 76 parent organization. There is nothing more to report than it is in our written report. Okay. Are there any? Would you like to try to ask him a question? Seeing no questions, okay, thank you for your... Uh, the next is uh, the 19, well, I guess it's uh, Dublin 2019, which is not on this, this isn't from this slide, but it is in the agenda. Uh, and there's a substantial uh, set of remarks from James Bacon, the chairman. Uh, people are welcome to read that. Is there a representative from Dublin present? Okay. Uh, are there any questions for the Dublin committee? Very none. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, I see. Uh, notice that the, in the slide it's got you confused because there's no B4. It's, uh, uh, okay. Uh, so next uh, is 2020 on Zoom. Is there a New Zealand representative here? I uh, can't see any. Next is 2021, this con is three. Okay. Uh, your representative. Okay, there is a representative present in this con three, uh, Anne Marie, our secretary. Uh, is there a question on the this con three financial report? Seeing none. Next is Shaikon. Now, the Shaikon report is particularly long and detailed, and the reason for this is that they were last year, so it's usual, normal for the first report after World Con to give a lot more information as to the expenses and income of that particular World Con. Uh, we have a Shaikon. We do. Uh, representative present. If there are any questions on the Shaikon financial report? None. The 
next uh, is Pemicon, which is actually a NASTIC. NASTICs are also required to file financial reports. And this was uh, 2023 this year. It's already occurred. Uh, I gather you have a representative from Pemicon, does yeah. uh, I wear lots of hats. <laughs> To, uh, I'm Kevin Stanley. I am a member of the Parent Corporation Board of Directors. Normally, when a WISFIS committee presents a report that shows a financial loss, that's the end of its reporting responsibility uh, because we only need to know what you did with your surplus. However, I have been asked to point out that this report was compiled very shortly after the convention ended there is a lot of income and expenses still un, or unaccounted for pending. We expect Pimicon to produce another and probably final report to next year's world. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, I don't really have, I'm just, I, yeah, I will, if you want to try and ask a question, I will see if I can answer it. Okay, uh, microphone please. Floor man, hello. Sorry? Sorry. Oops. I'm glad I'm not the only person who does that. <laughs> Vincent Docti. Uh, very minor question. I just note that the income and expense doesn't add up to the deficit. Huh? Which I presume Sorry. is just an oversight. So if you could ask the committee to just correct that. I hadn't noticed that. I will tell, I will ask Albert Souza, our treasurer, to please make the numbers add up correctly. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Uh, the next report is from uh, Chengdu. Small. So there is a Chengdu financial report here. Is, um, a representative is present. Yes. Uh, there are questions concerning the Chengdu financial report. I do not see any. interpretation and related equipment are available. So I propose a six minute time limit for this. Any objection to that? Seeing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Is there any debate on this motion? Oh, we have to. Uh, the speaker in favor? Or the, 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 maker, the maker should be given an opportunity to speak first if there are. If there are. Is debate, do you want it? Does the maker want to say anything? Uh, do you hear the maker of the Uh,我在这里加以说明。呃,我们的世界科幻协会章程和现行规则都是起源于英语的。而且随着时间的推移,我们是通过英语来确立了现在的版本,所以我们的WSFS的官方语言是英语。
呃，并且我们所有的章程和现行规则都是在英语基础上来进行最终解释的。但是我们也看到，无论是在之前的呃几届科幻大会，还是今天在成都召开的科幻大会，未来应该会有越来越多的国家和越来越多的城市会来主办我们的世界科幻大会。所以，我觉得这是一个积极的发展趋势。而且在此基础上，我们也应该去吸引全世界各地不同国家、不同地区和不同文化的人一同参与到我们的大会当中。所以，我们提出，在事务会议的期间，应该可以允许用双语进行讨论、进行辩论。同时，在会场，如果我们为了让所有的人能够完整的理解会务的内容，我们应该可以像今天这样提供同声传译的设备，所以，呃，在此基础之上呢，当届组委会也应该为我们的章程和现行规则提供翻译的版本。谢谢。Is there a speech against? So we already hear, we already doing a bilingual debate, and it's not in the constitution, I think. Constituting it would create more confusion. Imagine if this was, for example, in French Canada, right? So it's going to be a trilingual debate, maybe. So having it open, just like it is right now, we're already having a bilingual debate with no issues and nothing against the constitution. But so having it solid written, then it might create more confusion than what's happening right now. Just a minor point: this is the one the standing rules for the business meeting, not the constitution. But other than that, is there another speech in favor? Dave McCarty. Um, I think that formalizing English as the uh, official language of the business meeting, that everything should, for every World Con going forward, should also be in English, would be a good thing so that there is a constant thread of documentation of a business meeting that can be followed in a standard way. For the speeches against, seeing none, uh, we will vote by a show of hands. Uh, those who are in favor of this uh, addition to the standing rules for the business meeting, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and this uh, thing is adopted. Is there any objection to having it uh, take effect immediately? Hearing none, so it goes into effect immediately. We now come to uh, resolutions. Uh, the three resolutions that were submitted in advance are to extend the Hugo eligibility for three particular works. Uh, under the Constitution, a work that has limited distribution and the uh, have its eligibility extended for a year uh, by two thirds vote. So uh, these cases are on page 37, items D, D1, uh, sorry, 36 and 37, D1, D2, and D3. Uh, usually these are not controversial, but people have a right to speak and vote on them as they choose. Uh, I guess the question is, is there, is there any objection to the adoption of these um, resolutions uh, or any one of them? Because if there's nobody that objects to these, uh, then there's no particular reason to go through a detailed discussion or a separate vote or anything. Seeing no objections uh, to that, but I business will consider all three of these resolutions to have been adopted, thus extending people eligibility for these three works. Next, uh, over here. Mr. Uh, point of order, the Page numbers you're referring to don't seem to be consistent with the handouts that we've been given. Yeah, I think I have a different version that didn't have the financial, it has the financial reports in it. 
So the numbers are all different, so I'm not sure what I can do about that, but, but I will try not to give you wrong numbers. <laughs> okay. Can someone give me a copy that does not have the So the next uh, item of the business are constitutional amendments. Uh, there are two constitutional amendments that are uh, pending new ratification. The first is the zero percent solution, uh, which would strike the provisions in the Constitution that uh, if some uh, if some category has ballots from less than 25 percent of the the total final award ballots, then no award will be given in that category. So I suggest a time limit of six minutes for this uh, constitutional amendment up for ratification. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, the time limit is set to six minutes. And uh, this will be uh, discussed and debated uh, later in this meeting. Uh, the next item is uh, best game or interactive work. Somewhat lengthier change. This adds in a new category to the Constitution, a uh, new category of ego, which includes the uh, definition of uh, interactive work and uh, the best game or interactive work uh, category. I'm not sure if it's necessary for me to read this, but I may wish to look at it. This is item E.2. And we have the floor with E.1. I have suggested a time limit of six minutes for this item. Is there any objection to the six minutes? Hearing none, is that the time limit to be in six minutes? come to the new constitutional amendments that are up for the first time this year. The first of these is uh, convention time bracket, item S.1 in the agenda, would add a provision to the Constitution that uh, states uh, selected convention must be held, held between 20 June and 20 December, and preferably between 1 August and 30 September of the year for which it is selected unless some deviation from this is authorized under Section 2.6 of the Constitution. So this is uh, open for debate or amendment at this meeting, but we don't have to do that. It can be, it will also be considered and can be amended and debated uh, later. We cannot uh, finally adopt it or defeat it at this session. Uh, we cannot uh, adopt it. So hearing no Wait, this will be up uh, on uh, I move to delete the words and preferably between 1 August and 30 September with the appropriate dealing with Congress. Is there a second for this amendment? Hearing no second, the amendment fails. It never, never comes before the body anymore. Um, is there any further motions or debate concerning this amendment? I've got one. Time limit. Well, uh, I believe we already set the time limit. I didn't hear. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear. Okay, time limit is yeah, six minutes. So, are you going to oppose now? I thought we were setting the time now. We're supposed to setting the time now. If you let me, let me do that first, because that's the highest priority thing to do. So, I thought. Uh, my apologies. I, I thought I asked if there was any objection to six minutes for this. But, but not. Is there any objection to six minutes to wait time for this? <clears throat> Hearing none, wait time is set at six minutes. Uh, if you wish to speak to the, against the amendment, uh, the mover is so. Uh, setting a date uh, in the Constitution for the World Cup becomes really confusing if you want to go global. Like every country, every part of the world has a very different schedule than 
the western schedule. And even if you go north and south, well, winter and summer, these things you get really confusing. I understand the requirements of that there's so many things that the Worldcon needs to prepare uh, to set up a Worldcon, but having it hard written in the Constitution, forcing Worldcons to adhere to a certain date uh, period, makes it very hard for countries outside the Western Hemisphere to actually host a Worldcon. I have a speech in favor. Mr. Chairman, as I am the lead sponsor of this proposal, I have recused myself from the head table for the, whenever it is being considered. I believe that this debate, that debate on the substance of the motion, is better dealt with at the main business meeting, unless someone should wish to move to postpone it indefinitely, in which case I would, I would uh, debate it in that way. Is there any further debate? Hearing none, we'll go on to the next item of business. This will come up for uh, debate and possible other changes or whatever at the main business meeting. Next is uh, item F2, bid committee contactability. Uh, it's a change to require that bidders provide uh, their postal and email addresses and that that appear with the bid on the ballots to summarize it. Um, I have proposed a four-minute four timer for this. Uh, is there any objection to four minutes? Seeing none, time over the set of four minutes. Does anybody wish to debate or end it here? Apparently not. We will then proceed to the next item of business. Uh, so this is item F3, uh, and there are uh, two different uh, proposals that have been submitted which conflict with each other. So we will need to resolve this difference, which we normally would do at the main business meeting, which I think it's better practice to do it there. But I have uh, proposed an overall 14 minutes for this, uh, with five minutes for each of them. And the usual procedure would be to uh, debate and possibly amend each of them separately, then to uh, discuss the differences or whatever to debate between them, vote on, on selecting one of them, and finally to uh, confirm that the majority wants a selected uh, version, uh, such a uh, sub motion. That is just so people know what procedure I plan to use. So are there any objections to the time limits specified at 14 minutes overall with five minutes taken out of that 14 minutes for each of the two alternatives? Hearing no objections, the time limits are set as indicated. Um, unless somebody really wants to, I think it would be best to have the debate and uh, further uh, minutes and so forth occur at the main business meeting. I hear no objection to that. We'll do that uh, and go on to the next item of business, which is F5, best fan cast and not paying compensation. So this is a change of constitution, which basically would require that. No, no, F4. F4? I'm oh, sorry, I'm confusing it. Yeah, please, you skip one. Oops. Am I, uh, uh, Good, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Okay, sorry, okay. Uh, F4, eligibility criterion for non-English words. Amend the Constitution by adding a section that says the World Con Committee can establish a conversion ratio between the word count in specific languages and the number of English words. Nomination categories for written works shall be determined based on the converted English word count. And uh, that, I believe, is actually was done by uh, this year's Wolcom, but this would add it to the Constitution to clarify that that's uh, a normal procedure. I propose a six-minute time limit for this 
constitutional amendment. Is there any objection to six minutes? Seeing none, I'll move this up to six minutes. Does anybody want to do anything else in connection with this amendment right now? Seeing none, it'll come up with the main business meeting. Now, item F5, best fan cast not paying compensation. And this would make uh, changes to the Constitution which would limit the fan cast category to um, works for which uh, contributors were not paid monetarily. And, uh, I have suggested uh, eight minutes time limit for this. Are there any objections to eight minutes? Seeing none, time limit is set to eight minutes. Any other contributors to talk about it or anything else right now? I don't see anybody, so we'll, we'll come up with the main business meeting. Uh, item eight, six. Uh, the best young writer. Uh, this would add to the Constitution a section saying that, uh, I think we go category, saying best young writer. Any person who has had one or more written works in the field of science fiction or fantasy for the first time during the previous calendar year. Well, if the writer is between 15 and 24 when the works were published or appeared. Um, I suggested eight minutes for this amendment. Any objection to eight minutes? Okay. Any debate or motions at this point? Seeing none, this will come up at the main business meeting. Next is F7, clarifying language requirements. We we'll amend the Lisbeth's Constitution by adding the following. A work shall be eligible without any language limitation. Except as stated in section 3.4, extended eligibility. I suggested a six minute debate limit for this. Is there any objection to that? Yes. No, I, I think this is going to be a very hot topic. It's going to need a bit more than six minutes. What would you like? Uh, 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 actually, for quick procedure, is if there's any objection, we then vote on six minutes. So, all those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Uh, the nays have it, so we will go with a uh, uh, suggestion. What, what, sorry, what were you going to suggest? 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, you suggest one number. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes has been suggested. The original value proposed by the chair was six minutes. Are there other values suggested? Okay, the, uh, the procedure is to start with the longest time that has been suggested and vote uh, on shorter times until we get a majority. So, all those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. And all those opposed? Yeah, the nays have it, 12 is defeated. All those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it, I believe. And the ayes have it, so it's set to six minutes. It is in a, will be in order if we run out of time, or even before we have run out of time, to move to extend the time limit. It's clear that there's lots of people with lots of things to say, something like that. Are there any other motion? Yes? Move to postpone indefinitely. Is there a second? Seeing not seeing a second, it's not considered. Anything else? Next item is item F8, short title, Remove Regional Limitation. I've suggested that this strikes a section from the Constitution. The section that it strikes currently reads, words, works originally published outside the United States of America 
and first published in the United States of America in the previous calendar year shall be eligible for Hugo Awards. I suggested six minutes. Any objection to that? Yes. Uh, okay, sorry. You, you, uh, so, uh, following the correct procedure, this is an objection. We'll vote on six minutes. All those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe it's three to one, the ayes have it. So. Um, if you don't vote, you're not counted on either side. So, you know. uh, it's set to six minutes. Any other motions or uh, debate on this? Mr. Okay, I think this is a recommend to refer to committee to come back to the main with a proposed well, suggestion to improve. I'm not using the right language, but I'm sure you can help. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, we can refer this to a committee to... Uh, all, the, all the makers. Yeah, do we want to give any kind of direction? Or yeah, I, I get the intent. Um, I would point out that deleting this would remove many worthy items and would have removed several winners previously, including Sishin Liu's three-body problem. Um, but I get the intent, and I sympathize, and I would recommend the makers come back and substitute where it says published outside the United States of America with published outside the country of the administering Worldcom. Do you want to just move that as an amendment? I don't think that's the right language, I'm just making a okay. suggestion. Um, I guess that's a motion to refer to the committee to report back to the main business meeting. And did you want, were, I was just asking if you, I, if someone was saying, he, and he wanted to recommend that they consider that language, right. I guess, as part of his yeah. motion to refer to the committee. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a second for referring to committee? I see several. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded to refer this to a committee uh, with these, to improve the wording with the suggestion that they consider uh, changing it from instead of published outside the United States of America, instead say published outside the country of the administering convention. Who was the second? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Point yeah. I, I don't, I'm sorry. This is me for me yeah. for the visit sure. so. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing for the previous point, but I didn't know that this was when it should be done. I thought it would be next tomorrow. So the previous point about the language. Uh, well, okay, let's finish this question first, and then we'll get back to that. Uh, so it's been uh, it moved and seconded second to refer to committee. Is there any debate on the question of referring to committee? Want to speak in favor of referring to committee or against referring to committee? Seeing none, we will proceed to a vote on referring to committee. Uh, with the suggestion provided. All those in favor of referring F8 to move a regional limitation to the committee, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, yeah, the ayes have it, so it's referred to committee. Oh. Uh, is there, I think the ayes have it. Is there a question on that? Nobody objects. The ayes have it. Uh, okay. Um, is there any? Uh, we should clarify that we've sent it back to the specific that they made it. I'm not sure they realize it. That's not the yeah. committee. Oh, so, so people interested in being on this committee should come up to the head table after this session adjourns, and uh, the committee will have to report back uh, to the main business meeting. Uh, is there any objection to referring to item F7? Uh, what you said. <laughs> which was the clarifying language requirement. Uh, that's the one you wanted to okay. pay. I don't hear any objection to that. So uh, I gather there's a motion. So uh, in the same spirit, uh, I believe that the whole point of the language was again uh, the Constitution currently gives an exception to uh, works published in English in the prior year, and I also want to refer to the creators or to a committee that it will uh, change the language that it, the exception becomes to the language of the hosting country. Uh, the previous year. 
Would you have any objection if both of these were referred to the same committee? I believe they're pretty yeah. closely related. Apparently there's no objection. So given that we have referred item F8 to a committee, is there any objection to referring item F7 to the same committee? Is there shared share of the Seeing none, we will do that. Uh, okay, the next item of business is F9, establishment of uh, ASPER, Asian Science Fiction Management. And this uh, is our, uh, page number one, I didn't mind. So this is a very extensive, but it basically establishes an Asian Science Fiction Convention. Uh, this is on page 20 of the English language agenda for most people. Uh, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, and uh, it basically adds a Asian Science Fiction Convention with provisions that are essentially parallel to the ones for the North American Science Fiction Convention. Um, I have set a time limit of 14 minutes. Is there any objection to 14 minutes for this? Seeing none, the uh, time is set at 14 minutes. Uh, are there any other motions related to this? The chairs, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to see added to it that the um, that the NASPIC get considered at the same time. If we're going to look at Asian, then we should also look at the NASPIC and make it consistent. Um, I don't know how to say this right. <laughs> uh, if you're uncertain as to what the right wording would be, would it make sense to refer this to a committee to work on it? Yes. Okay. And we are actually doing quite well on time. So by the way, it's possible these committees could meet like in this room right after this session. So yeah, this way. Okay, so it's been moved to refer this to a committee. Uh, is there a second for such a motion? Really? No, no second. Oh, okay, we've got a second. Okay, we move and second to refer this to a committee uh, to report back to the main business meeting to uh, improve the wording and consider uh, an aspect also. Um, Mr. Chairman, speaking in my videographer role, since there is no one available to be scanning out into the audience, um, I think if we could ask people when they speak to please give their names for the benefit of the recording. That would be useful. I should have mentioned this earlier. Uh, so when you first speak, it would be useful uh, for you to give your name or if you haven't spoken for a while. Yeah, every time. The secretary has requested that people give their names every time they speak. Uh, yes, please. 呃，各位，因为我们有录制的关系，所以麻烦各位在起来发言的时候先提报一下自己的名字，以方便在呃会后的视频当中可以呃看到。谢谢。Next item is item F7. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, F10. Who yep. the people are here to keep me on track? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> F10, uh, best game category. So we add a new category uh, called best game, and it would be awarded to science fiction or fantasy productions that have been doing the format for the first time in the previous year. Um, okay. Uh, Point of information, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Daniello, since we have a best game, you go up for ratification this year. 
if that yugo is ratified, and then this should pass this year and be ratified next year, is this a replacement for the best game, or is this a second yugo for best game? Um, in my opinion, this is a second yugo for best game. Yeah, the, the motions, in some technical sense, do not conflict because it's a ratification for one and a first passage for the other. Uh, I set the time limit at six minutes. Is there any objection to that? Seeing none. Um, in the six minutes, uh, any other motions in connection with this? Okay, yeah, we'll come up for consideration with the main business meeting. Item F11, uh, independent film. So this adds uh, two new Hugo categories, Best Independent Short Film and Best Independent Feature Film, as described in the agenda. And I guess there's on page uh, 21 of the English language agenda. I've uh, suggested a time of 10 minutes for this. Is there any objection to 10 minutes? Uh, Are there any motions or other in connection with this? Seeing none, this will come up at the main business meeting. So this may appear to be the end of the agenda, however, have something which the maker themselves described as super late. So we have one more item of business uh, from David Party, who is no longer here. And uh, he would like to uh, add to the standing rules the text shown on this slide. So this is a motion to amend the standing rules uh, by adding a uh, section with the uh, title proxy and remote voting, which would say that only WISFUS members physically present at the business meeting shall be recognized for purposes of debate or may move, second, or vote on motions on the floor of the meeting. Proxy voting is not permitted. So this is the current practice and is implied by our current rules. However, as it says in the contract, however, uh, there are things in the standing rules to emphasize them at clarity uh, for people who may not be aware of our practices or the implications of our other rules. So this would just add what is the existing practice as required by our other rules uh, in a clear form to the standing rules. Uh, and I've set the time over to six minutes. Any objection to that? Seeing none. Uh, is there any, this is a change to the standing rules so we can vote on it now. Uh, are there any uh, speakers who should speak to this? Amendment to the standing rules. So, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, 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 呃，如果不能直接参加线下会议的讨论的话，呃，只是单纯的通过一个线上投票，那么这个投票，啊、呃，它是不是没有经过充分的讨论？会不会有这样一个情况？呃、uh, ，we we do not currently permit uh online voting or participation. So, uh, uh, I, I can say that again. Uh, uh, 如果我们没有线上讨论的话，我建议这一条规则，我们呃是不是应该再继续考虑一下？嗯、呃，是不是
要在这条规则被加进去的同时，我们增加，就是我们这个事务会议的这个网络网络会议。Far as I remember, many, many years, well before the possibility of remote meetings, have never permitted remote,、uh, remote participation. And furthermore, our adopted parliamentary authority, which is established in the Constitution of the World Science Fiction Society, explicitly says that proxy voting is not permitted. Unless there are rules in the Constitution or bylaws that permit it, and the most recent addition of our parliamentary authority has a section about remote participation that says if we want to have remote participation, we need to adopt rules to permit it and to regulate it. Therefore. The proposal before the meeting merely codifies the existing rules. If someone does not like the existing situation, they should propose rules that change it to what they think it should be. So this motion merely、uh, sorry, clarifies existing process. Thus, if it is defeated, nothing has changed, because what is up here is what the rules are. You just have to go digging through all of our rules to find out why that is the case. And I therefore think that it would probably be a good idea to adopt it, given that it seems to have caused some confusion. Thank you. Is there any further discussion or、uh, motions concerning this? Seeing none, we、we'll、proceed to a vote on this addition to the standing rules. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed. That's adopted unanimously. So、uh, the, that concludes the main business、uh, for this preliminary business meeting. We've established two committees, one of which is to、uh, discuss and report back on the、uh, two language-related motions, which were. F7 and F8. Okay, and the other committee was to、uh, discuss and report back with、uh, possible wording improvements for F9. Yes.、Uh, so people who wish to be on these committees should come up to the head table to volunteer after the adjourn. And、uh, is there any? Other, I guess that tomorrow is the first main business meeting,、uh, which will start in this room at 10. Are there any、uh, other announcements anybody wishes to make related to the business meeting? Hearing none, I guess I'd better see you adjourn.